I'm Lynn Marie Becerra. I'm a third year doctoral student in the College of Education, Cultural Studies, and Social Thought. Um, I'm here to talk about LEAD, Latino Education Advocacy Day. Um, I've had the opportunity, this is my third year, being an organizer for the LEAD Town Hall Summit. Um, as I shared, LEAD is the Latino Education Advocacy Day. It is a national conversation happening that impacts Chicanos, Latinos, Mestizos in the United States that's also being aired internationally. Um, from what I hear, there are about 1,500 town halls of which here at Washington State University Pullman we have organized and there are over 7 million viewers. That was at least the record last year. So all that to say, why is it important for us in Pullman? Because many of the issues that the lead planning team have organized around are specifically around how to promote and support Chicanos, Latinos, Mestizo students in education in many different capacities. They call it a broad-based awareness of issues that impact our community. And as a graduate student here, I find it important to learn a lot about my community that I am a student at, or excuse me, a student in, here at Washington State University, go Cougs. So that's why I'm doing what I'm doing. And this year, what we've done different is we've invited Washington State folks that are doing the work in their communities throughout the state of Washington. Yes, those on the west side, those in central Washington, eastern Washington, and um, throughout. So we have seven invited guests, and at the end of this town hall, we will have a dinner, <clears throat> excuse me, we'll have a dinner and be able to localize the conversation with what does lead the promotion and support of Chicanos, Latinos, education, advocacy? What does this have to do with Washington State? So that's what we look forward to do. And as I shared, I feel like I've had the honor to learn from this experience. Um, as a member of Camaradas, co-chair of Camaradas, we found it really important to bring this conversation to our undergraduate students. Um, to A, educate them about the issues that impact us nationally, but also to connect them with people who are doing the work. Many of us in the Chicano, Latino, Mestizo community are first generation college students. So as a current graduate student, I find it also important to foster those professional networking relationships that many of us know through our life and work. You can't do anything alone and it's important to make those links. So. That's another underlying reason of why the WSU Pullman Town Hall and dinner, as sponsored by Camaradas and many other generous folks, why we find it important to bring the national conversation to WSU Pullman. So if you could start by telling us your name and uh, a little bit about what you do. Uh, my name is Martin Meraz Garcia. I'm an assistant professor of Chicano Studies and Political Science at Eastern Washington University. Okay. And why did you choose to attend the Latino Education Advocacy Day Summit? Well, I mean, the, uh, this event, of course, uh, uh, has a lot of, uh, or discusses a lot of issues that I'm interested in, um, issues related to education of Latinos. I mean, that's, that's my area of focus. That's what I, I mean, I teach Chicano Studies, and we focus a lot of uh, on the issues that are being discussed today. So, um, you know, when I was invited here, I was I was really glad, uh, I mean, to, to come here. I'm, I'm also a WSU alum. So, uh, I mean, I took this opportunity to, of course, uh, also, uh, you know, visit some of my mentors here uh, that uh, have contributed to my education. So, I was really glad to be invited here. And, of course, it is an honor to, to be invited to this kind of event because it, it really sort of recognizes some of the work that uh, we have been doing as well. Can you talk about what you would like um, the general audience to know about Latinos in education? Um, well, uh, I think it would have been, uh, well, uh, we should have uh, as many students as possible here because, uh, again, the information being provided here, uh, I, mean, I mean, I hear that it's broadcast in several different states. In fact, I think it's also an international event, I believe, I mean, because it's broadcasted through the internet. So, uh, I mean, it would be great that other students, uh, not only from WSU, but of course uh, to different parts of the state, uh, to take advantage of this uh, great information, informational sessions that they have. Uh, I mean, they have 
uh, well-recognized speakers, uh, you know, from different areas, and what that which they have lots to contribute. So, so I, you know, it would be great that uh, a lot more students would benefit from this information. You mentioned you were alumni. Could you talk about your time here at WSU and, and being in the culture and heritage houses? Yes, um, I. Um, both my wife and I came uh, to WSU in 2001. Um, I did a PhD in political science. Uh, my wife, Cristina Torres Garcia, did a PhD in cultural studies and social thought at the uh, College of Education. Um, you know, when I was here, I uh, I didn't know much about the cult the cultural houses and then the the, the great uh, accommodations that you have now. And of course, uh, as, as mentioned uh, earlier, I think I was sharing with some of my colleagues that um, I felt really nice, really actually, I felt really important to sort of <laughs> be housed in, in these homes. Uh, I mean, it, it really it, it, it's it's impressive, and, and I am very glad to know that WSU uh, has this type of accommodations. Uh, I mean, again, very impressive, uh, very roomy, very sort of homey. So um, I was I was very glad to, of course, not only be have been invited to this event and participate in a panel, but also to to uh, know that WSU is, uh, I guess, somehow acquiring this housing accommodations to to uh, house guests like me. So I was, you know, again, I, I felt really good. I felt really welcome. So thank you. My name is Vanessa Martinez. I'm a doctoral candidate in the Department of Counseling Psychology, as well as a, a past co-chair of Camaradas, the Chicano Latino Graduate and Professional Student Association at Washington State University. Um, I currently work as a counselor uh, for the University of Idaho, um, working with the university council. Uh, students there counseling them. Uh, so one of the things I would like to mention about the LEAD uh, Summit today, uh, highlights that I noticed was that uh, various professionals from different organizations, whether it was um, people within academia, within policy making, um, different forms of commission for Hispanic Affairs, I really appreciate that everyone took the time to get together along with students to educate everyone about the issues that face uh, Latinos in education and just ways to advocate for the communities. Um, one of the things also that I'd like to highlight that was important for me to hear was that in the state of Washington, there is an increase in the num number of Latinos that are here. And I've also noticed that there was a relationship between that increase in the number of Latinos in the state of Washington with the increase in the agricultural um, production of economic development with crops that a lot of Latino farm workers are directly involved in producing. So with that, I, th I think it was important to notice that there's a need for, you know, with the Latinos in the state of Washington pro providing an increase in the revenue that's being developed, there's also a need to educate the, the students that are basically here. Um, a lot of them are 1079 students, meaning they don't get uh, funding from the federal government or even state institutions to provide for these students. They're paying a lot more than in-state students are for going into higher education. And one thing to highlight is that within the US, there's approximately 16% of Latinos that make up the population, um, in addition to undocumented individuals that haven't been reported through the US Census. So with that, um, Latinos being the largest racial ethnic minority group in the US, they're also the least educated in, return in regards to um, going on to college and getting degrees. Uh, so that's a, that's a very interesting fact that needs to be changed because uh, Latinos are contributing to the US economy. They're making uh, positive contributions to society and in the state of Washington um, as well. So um, it's very important that policymakers um, begin to give back to these communities. Um, create funding opportunities both for 1079 students as well as for Latino students that are in the state and trying to fund their education as a way of, of um, furthering their community and giving back as well. So um, really would be important for uh, both within academia and policymakers to uh, create changes that advocate for the needs of Latinos to further their education and uh, provide ways for them to make positive differences in the world. 
So your name and your position, so tell us about what you do. My name is uh, Uriel Iniguez. I'm the director of the Washington State Commission on Hispanic Affairs. Okay. Why did you attend today's uh, Latino Education Advocacy Day Summit? Why is this an important event? Well, as educationists, uh, in my opinion, is paramount for uh, not only the state of Washington and economic development, but also for the Latino community. We are one of the largest growing populations in the state of Washington. And in regards to education, we have to be key plans uh, for the state. Uh, part of the why it's important is we're still having a lot of difficulties on uh, getting Latinos to graduate from, from high school, let alone attend uh, college. And so if we are going to be successful in the future, we have to start addressing this, the, the gap, the opportunity gap issue. So what do you want people to know about Latinos in education? Well, part of it, I want to make sure that people understand the, the benefits of educating the Latinos, the issues facing educating Latinos, and the contributions that Latinos have made up to now uh, in regards to economics. And sometimes we want to separate it, but I believe that education is tied to economics and the economic well-being, not only of Latinos, but the rest of the state. And so when we are having conversations, we have to talk about if, for example, we continue with the dropout rate, uh, what resources are going to be exhausted in, in regards to incarceration, in regards to crime rates and all that stuff. And we could turn the resources around and multiply them in the positive if we were just to help Latinos graduate uh, more successfully from high school and into college. How have you enjoyed your time at Washington State University and at the Culture and Heritage Houses? It's been good, yeah. I had the entire house to ourselves uh, last night. We didn't have a party or anything, so it was good. <laughs> we were too tired, uh, but it, it, was, it was good too. Uh, I love the art that was there. Uh, there were some great books to read on, on Latino issues. So, you know, I kind of, actually I was reading one of them, it prepared me for today. My name is Ricardo Sanchez. I'm the uh, director of the Latino Latina Educational Achievement Project. Uh, we're based in Seattle and it's part of um, CMAR Community Health Centers. And um, our organization has a simple mission and that is to improve academic achievement of Latino children in Washington State. And uh, we do that by um, bringing together a statewide advisory board that looks at policies that we think uh, the state or the United States Congress, or possibly school boards, uh, would consider as policies uh, that could improve, uh, that could lead to improvement of um, academic achievement of, of Latino students. So, uh, and, and then our organization also has developed a, a leadership program for uh, middle school and high school age students. And that leadership is built around uh, four core elements, we call them, and that starts with college awareness and readiness, uh, leadership, civic engagement, and community involvement. Uh, and that kind of takes up um, the majority of, of activities that, that we do, but we're pretty heavily engaged in, in promoting policies that are important. And, and so uh, in terms of this conference and the invitation from uh, Lynn Becerra, uh, I was pleased to accept it because it, it really does get at what uh, we think is one of the most important things that, that we can do as educators and as adults, and that is to thoughtfully consider uh, policy ideas and proposals that, that can lead to improved um, academic achievement for, for Latino students who, that's uh, our, our mission is to help those students. So uh, I was pleased to see that um, WSU and Eastern and, and, and other universities are, are really supporting this national uh, conference. So what's up everybody? My name is Jorge Enrique Moraga. I'm a first year doctoral student in the Department of Critical Culture, Gender and Race Studies. Um, here trying to throw a couple words uh, here at the Latino Education Advocacy Day at Washington State University. Um, and honestly what I got from today um, 
is a, a sense of inspiration and empowerment um, in the sense that um, the movement's not dead. Uh, we as students, we as graduate students, as undergraduate students, have a pivotal role in the way that education policy is dictated, um, implemented, and pressured in the state of Washington. Uh, so, I mean, it's about gearing the, not only, you know, graduate work, research, um, and to leave it within the confines of the academic institution, but rather to, to really start connecting, you know, how social policy and education and politics and the legislature, how we as, as students, you know, basically can start researching what, what legislative uh, policies are on the table, whether or not it helps benefit um, and creates change for our communities, right? So, uh, you know, just, just throwing it out, you know, um, you know, start checking out the co the Commission on Hispanic Affairs, trying to see the work that they do, implement, you know, some kind of um, commitment towards, you know, uh, figuring out how our legislature works and how we as uh, students within the academia can use the tools that we're getting here and start, you know, implementing it in our communities at large. My name is Jose Moreno. I'm Assistant Professor of History and Ethnic Studies at Heritage University located in the Yakima Valley in Toppenish, Washington. Uh, the reason why I'm in the LED conference today is because I'm an advocate of education. Growing up in a low urban slash rural income, low income communities, I've seen the education, um, you know, um, lack, of, lack of education funds of, to, towards um, you know, minority students. I've seen a lot of the, uh, discrimination throughout my years of going, it's going on in different levels of higher ed and also at the K-12 level. So we have a lot of work to do. Yes, today we're talking about the problems uh, in here, especially in Washington, but nationwide is that retention is the issue. And it's an ongoing issue at, at the university level and also at the high school level. So what we need to do is create new programs that are outside the box that will, that will help students gain critical thinking skills, basic writing skills, and math skills, and science skills to survive in college. And we need to uh, develop uh, our students, and especially people of color and low-income students that don't have the advantages that privileged students have that went to higher, higher schools for the K-12 parents. So the goal is to um, you know, promote that, but also we have to work together and create communities, you know, new communities based on you know, common interests and stop you know, being, being divisive. And, you know, it's not about a, it's a class issue, it's not a racial issue. So I'm here today to uh, share uh, my story uh, going through the hard knocks education from K-12 experience I had up to the university level and then give you some feedback on how first year experience could survive in college uh, students and then just, just talking about like you know my experiences and the work I'm doing to um, advocate for educational issues here in, in Washington State. My name is Maria Isabel Morales and I am a third year graduate student in Culture Studies and Social Thought and Education PhD program. Um, my role within Camaradas, I am a co-chair along with Linda Serra. Um, so why lead? Uh, I was introduced to this event two years ago. And two years ago I wasn't involved with Camaradas and I just heard about it. But um, being my first year here, I didn't, I didn't really go and try to find out what this was about. Um, but why is it that we're doing it with Camaradas? Um, basically, it's important. It's, it's an important work that needs to happen, not just for the state of Washington, but for the whole country. Um, I think it's, uh, it's important work because it's, it's, it's a reality that Latinos, uh, students of color in general, but this event focusing on Latinos, uh, we are we're falling behind, and not necessarily because it's we as, as a community um, we chose to do so, but the, the educational system is not necessarily um, supporting us in many ways. And so I think it's important because these are conversations and these are reminders for, for all of us like why it is that uh, we, um, why it is that for, for, for people like me, why am I in school? Why am I in school? Because um, there's a lot of Latinos that are not making it. You know, there's this, this whole pipeline that uh, we have to travel and many students are falling behind, um, not necessarily because uh, you know they chose to. A lot of times they're pushed out, and so this this event is an important project, an important conversation. Um, in order to change the numbers, there's a lot of dropouts. There's a lot of, or rather, pushouts. The pushout rate is really high. Um, 
there's a lot of situations that, that Latinos are facing that I myself went through. Um, for instance, you know, in high school, uh, my counselor, when I first went to her, and I, I graduated from a very small town here in central Washington, uh, and uh, I went to her and I said, I want to go to university. And first thing she told me was, are you sure you don't want to go to community college? And so I told her no, and I persisted. And until she saw my grades, then I think she saw me as sort of a token and said, okay, well, I think you can make it. And so she started helping me sort of, but a lot of my friends didn't necessarily get that support because she didn't see what, what she saw in me, whatever that was. And so I experienced, experienced firsthand. Um, I've had to go through, I've had to jump a lot of hurdles in order to get here. Um, first generation immigrant. I immigrated here when I was five years old. Um, always questioning my role in school. Now that I'm in graduate school, I'm always thinking, why am I here? Why am I here? And um, there's that whole imposter system. Uh, maybe I'm not supposed to be here. And and so these are realities for all of us. So why leave? Because for me personally, this is a, this is a reality. This is my story, a story of a struggle. Um, school is important for us, but school is not always supportive. And um, in the educational system, there's a lot of gaps. There's a lot of uh, holes. And so as a community, we need to talk about it and we need to figure out ways to uh, fix it. And so this is, this is a place that we can talk about that. My name is Vincent uh, Perez. I work for the Association of Washington School Principals. I'm the founder of La Cima and La Chispa Bilingual Leadership. We've been in existence for about 10 years. And we do Latino outreach uh, for uh, particular schools, school districts, um, and anyone else really interested in our programming, staff development, that kind of thing. Uh, in terms of today's events, I'm, um, I think, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, Console, I'm trying to find a word here. I think it's exciting to know that this is happening all across the nation with various groups. So to be part of this kind of national conversation that's focused on one day, to me is the significance of what's happening. That many peoples all across uh, uh, many communities are focusing on one day, and I think that's uh, probably the highlight for me. Hello, my name is Jacob Leon. I'm an undergrad here at WSU. I'm studying English education, and um, this event is really like, I have a lot of passion for this event because the talks were dealing with education and I think that public education and free public education is something that we need to all like realize is very important here in America and so guiding, guiding teachers and creating that space for teachers I feel is something that's very important and just being able to open up this dialogue between student, parent, teacher, policy maker, I think is really a critical aspect in getting everyone involved. Yeah, my name is Tony Sandoval and I'm a Washington State University alumni here. Uh, graduated in 1989. Um, I currently live in uh, uh, Yakima and I'm a business owner down there. And I wanted to come to this uh, conference to see how far my, my university has come since I was here. Uh, to me it looks like it needs a little bit you know, uh, more work and part of what I want to do is uh, try to reacquaint myself with uh, new connections and that way we can network. Because what I've seen with that since I've been here is there's different people doing good stuff, it's just not all of us are connected. So that's what I want to do, uh, connect with some of them or all of them, with as many people as I could. Okay. Can you talk a little, about, a little bit about the LEAD program and why it's important? Well, it's important because uh, without education, you know, it's, a, it's a basis for uh, pr pretty much everything, you know, business, uh, being a doctor, uh, contributing back to the community. And to me, uh, we don't have enough ethnics still competing out there into the real world. So this is why this, this program needs to be uh, continued to, to be in ex existence and actually grow. I was disappointed in the number of individuals that were here. I was expecting, I you don't know, like a whole auditorium full of people, but it's a start. I'm Nora Martinez Chavez, and I live in the Yakima Valley in Central Washington. I work for Community Health of Central Washington, which is a nonprofit, and we run several clinics in both Yakima and Kittitas County. 
I also volunteer a lot in the community. Um, I guess you could say I'm an advocate for the Latino community in my area. Um, and the reason I came to the conference today for Latino Education Advocacy Day um, is because I was asked to come and and I'm actually getting to network with other people from other um, organizations that also believe in the importance of Latino education, higher education, and it's just great to be here today. Okay. You want to talk about sort of the value of Latinos in education or sort of why advocacy is important? Um, Advocacy for Latino education is really important because of the fact we have so many talented students in all over the state of Washington and especially those that are undocumented. I feel that they can contribute so much to our community and it's just sad, it's just really sad that they, that they have the hardship paying for tuition. So to me it's like even though we have the HB 1079 that gives them the opportunity to be charged in-state tuition, you know, that still is not going to be enough. I mean, we still need to work forward so that we can provide scholarships for all students, regardless of their legal status in the state of Washington, and also provide them with opportunities and be great role models, and they hopefully will return back to our community and help us move forward as well.